We moved on to Acts 27 this morning. Acts chapter 27. Covering verses 1 to 5. I particularly want to highlight this history of Paniam to Sunday Law. We're seeing a transition from the 6th to the 7th Kingdom of Bible Prophecy. The 6th is the lamb-like beast of Revelation 13. As the lamb-like beast falls, we then find that that same entity speaks like a dragon. And it appears to be more powerful afterwards than it was before. It has a concept of church and state. Principles that we symbolize by calling them Sunday laws. It's powerful enough to not only force them on their own people. But in this history, they are enforcing them across the whole world. So you know that whatever the fall of the United States looks like, it's becoming more powerful than it was before. We began to consider this history. Panium is the defeat of the King of the South. It's defeated at Panium. But we can see from multiple witnesses that that is progressive. It's defeated at Panium. But it falls progressively till its destruction at Sunday Law. So we mark Padium to Sunday Law as the fall of the King of the South. So what we have done, so we've gone back to the beginning of our reform line. The beginning of this line is going to explain the end. Because the King of the South has been defeated before. At Panium it's defeated. But at 1989 it's defeated. So if we want to understand Panium to Sunday Law, and what the Seventh Kingdom looks like, we need to go back to 1989 to 91. This fall of the King of the South and understand what that looks like begins to fall at 89, it's defeated here. But the Soviet Union doesn't dissolve until 1991. So it's a process. So we went back into this history and started to consider the politics. You had two world wars. Millions of deaths. And destruction. And this was Germany. As a fascist power is nationalistic 
nyika inotongwa ne yakazvimirira yoga wanting to be the world superpower yaida kuti ive nyika iri pamusoro penyika dzose pasiris and enforce its will on other countries yobva yatanga kuisa zvainofunga iyo pane nyika dzimwe dzose when germany is defeated finally at the end of world war 2 germany painozokurirwa panogumira hondo yechipire pasiris the victorious countries form the un the purpose is to prevent another superpower like that of Germany. And this leads to a tense few decades where the UN is also having to work with two superpowers izo apo boka batore united nations raishanda ne nyika mbiri dzine simba the soviet union and the united states soviet union and united states and this is described as a bipolar world izi ndo zvinotsana ngurwa nevara rinonzi bipolar world because bi means two nokuti bi zvinoreva mbiri pole means opposites Poles no reva kuti zakapesa. Like opposite poles, North Pole, South Pole. Sasa tinga ita kuti e ma ma e kupesa na kwa kaita kumsoro ni kusas. So you have two superpowers or bipolar. Saka tini ma 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 simba ma viri kana kuti bipolar. And they're restraining each other. Vakanga wari ku zama ku zikisirana. As the Soviet Union begins to fall. Soviet Union payakatanga kudona. America begins to rise. America yatanga kusimukira. And Gorbachev comes up with a plan. Gorbachev over afunga zana. Says we don't want another Germany. Over ata tidi mwe Germany foot. Doesn't trust the United States. Ah, waskuvi imba nika United States. So we need to make sure that it's the UN that dictates dictates terms in this history. Saka zwa tofana ita tofana kuta uti UN iwe iwe iripa msoro penyika zose mkati menu rondo iripa mbe. And it's Gorbachev's concept of the new world order. Saka ayendo oma onero wa Gorbachev kanachi sana ngura ma miriro macha enyika ino pasiris. That speaks of the United Nations controlling affairs. Anu taura pa msoro pe United Nations iripa msoro penyika yose. And it's the concept of globalism. Another word for multipolar. But George Bush and those in his administration say multipolar is a threat to US, to US dominance. They want to make sure that the United States is the world superpower. Ivo vari kuda kuti nyika ya America ive nyika iri pamusoro penyika dzese pasitendere. And that superpower status cannot be threatened by any other country. Saka vari kuti iro iro dano ravari kuda kusvika iri ari fanira kuvhiringidzwa chero nani nani zvake. So from his his presidency in 1989 George Bush is working against this idea of a multipolar world. George Bush arukushanda zvinji achidzivisa fungwa ekuti nyika nyika zvinji dzive nesimba pasitendere. There was a document leaked in this history. Pane chinyorwa chakanyorwa mukati menhorondo. About how the United States meant to protect its status as the superpower. Pamusoro pekuti United States yakazama sei kuchengetedza dano rayo pasirese Whenever a country be, be started to become powerful eh pose badnona nyika ichitanga kuva nesimba Whatever that power looks like eh zvisine kuti simba iri rinenge rakambomira sei It could be military it could be through resources. Or it could be economically. If a country started to become more powerful, the United States must crush it. United States ino vaya inda kuno pukanya nike. To protect its status. Kutive ino chenge teza chinzimbo chai. So if you see another country. Saka kano kana ime nika. Building up a strong economy. Ya kuhumba. Ya kuhumba. Zemari ayo. 
the United States must suppress its economy. They were very open about this. They must never allow a rival to rise up to a position where it could threaten America. In they defined a threat as any country that would have a stronger economy a strong military anything so in this history 1989 Iraq or Saddam Hussein is beginning to threaten Kuwait Iraq cannot remind Saddam Hussein in, in 1990 he invades Kuwait Mugura 1990, ano Kuwait. And he automatically controls one fifth of the world's oil supply. Saka Murumo, ano tanga kutsana, ano tanga kisa paspake, one fifth, ye ye mafuta, e nika yose. He had justified reasons to invade Kuwait. Akagan is kon zero, zano na zaka. But he became a threat to the world's oil supply. In 1993, Gorbachev introduces the phrase the new world order. Gorbachev, new world order. George Bush redefines it. George Bush over on, sep on September 11 of 1990. His speech towards a new world order. And what he is saying, it has been two superpowers. There will be many superpowers. Many powers. You can have your UN. But the New World Order is one superpower. American supremacy. And it's that that began to be introduced. 1991, the Soviet Union dissolves. And Soviet Union The United States throughout this history is acting unipolar. United States, Mukatime, Everything starts to go wrong in this history. 1999, the King of the South. Putin is elected. Putin, Anova, Asaru. 2001. 2001. Islam. So the King of the South and Islam. Mambo Islam. Threaten America's status. The King of the South resurrects. King of the Mambogusasu Ano Muka begins to challenge American supremacy again. Anova A Tanga Ku Sawirana Ne Ne Chinano China America. And then Islam makes a direct attack on the anniversary of America's New World Order. Islam Inovaya and Yono Yono Bomba America. So we find this restraint placed on America. And it's worth noting the second Iraq war. How George Bush, the son, sees the role of the UN. 
kuti George Bush mwana anoona sei basa re United Nations. So if 1989 to 91. So from 1989 to 1991. Is the defeat and fall of the King of the South. Do pano kuriwa ne kuwa mambo kuzas. It's also already told us. About Paniam to Sunday law. The fall of the King of the South again. It shows us what the seventh kingdom of Bible prophecy looks like. It looks exactly like the New World Order George Bush was trying to introduce. This history it fails. It's restrained. This history it's unrestrained. They have multiple problems in this history. Problems within their own government. Problems with the economy. Trump could have been president, but he goes bankrupt. Trump president Russia begins to come back. Russia Islam. Islam. They have multiple problems. In this history, those problems are solved. Another issue we need to remember. 1989. Ronald Reagan. Murumainz Ronald Reagan. Is in an alliance with John Paul II. Ano pinda mukupata na na Pope John Paul wajipiri. The minute the Berlin Wall falls. What begins to happen to their alliance? What begins to happen between Reagan and John Paul II? What begins When George Bush wants to invade Iraq, George Bush What's the response of John Paul II? John Paul II ano He goes to George Bush. And he says we're equal allies. We've just defeated the Soviet Union together. I don't think you should invade Iraq. This is in the history of 89 and 90. And George Bush says, George Bush over at I don't even need you anymore, John Paul II. Over at you are and Chaku and Chaku de John Paul II. Who do you think you are to tell me who I can and cannot invade? Urian, you could do the one to no quansa and one to sing a quansi pamba. So they have a bigger problem. Sagavatu ni dams go. We talk about an alliance here. That alliance is worthless November 10 of 89. We all think they've come together at 9-11. Long before 9-11. Any alliance between the papacy and the United States had broken apart bitterly. Ne 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 Catholic quato qua kanganisika shuru April Chipo April first of nineteen ninety one. Kuva April one muna nineteen ninety one. John Paul the second is speaking about the Iraq war. John Paul Echipiri Arukara Pam Sorope Hondo Iraq. Better known as the war in the Persian Gulf. Ino Zika Majin Zio Hondo Pa Persian Gulf. He says it's a darkness. That has cast a shadow over the whole human family. He says America made the choice of aggression. America America 
and violated international law. When it thought it, it should intervene and solve the tension between two groups by war. By death. So he's publicly fighting in the United States by 1991. Saka is probably. He's publicly fighting. Saka America Pachena. Eh, muna 1991. 2001 is a war in Afghanistan. Muna 2001 kune wonde kwa Afghanistan. And John Paul says. Eh, John Paul we are not. You can defend yourself against terrorists. Muno gona kuzi ruisa imi kuzi 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 ku kuzi miririra pam soro pe awanda ukuruisa. But you cannot hold entire nations to account. Asi amu gona kuti muzoti. Nika yose ndo ine mosa. 2003. Muna 2003. John Paul II. John Paul II. Says to the United States. Ano tikunika ya Amerika. Do not invade Iraq again. Musa pinda mwa mamu Iraki uze kare mjipa amba. He says. Ano ti. I have one or two things to say to the United States. Ndine zinu chumweche tika na zuirizo. Ngade utawara kunika ya Amerika. The Pope says. Pope ano ti. This should be done in participation with the international community with the permission of the UN. United Nations. So pretty much directly after 1989. We can no longer speak about any alliance between the papacy and the US. So there are many things in this history that do not go to plan. But the overall intentions of the United States never changed. They see themselves as unipolar. I want us to consider what this history looks like. When we say the sixth is the USA, America, the seventh is the UN. United Nations. I would suggest that would be a good thing. That's positive. Because what does the UN look like? If we were to draw what the UN looks like, you have this organization. And what is what makes the UN up? It's representatives. From all countries. So, Saka. you have a representative from the United States. Saka. America. From Russia. Russia. England. England. France. France. Germany. Germany. You also have the Palestinians. Palestine. You have Israel. You have India. And Pakistan. Pakistan. You have Iran. Iran Momo. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Kuwait. Kuwait. What others? China. 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 Now I know we can put all the countries up here. But how we see the UN when we think of it as a bad thing is this group of powerful people that all come together to plot how they can control us. 
kutiwa no na kuti waita se kutiwa ne simba pamsoro pedu. Bring about some type of agenda. Wava wava wisa imwe chimwe chino chakavi kwa chavaruda kuburiza. But if we actually consider what the UN is, as tukanyo zote tarisa tuko shi chino bonzi UN. It's all these different countries. Kuti nika zese zira ziru umu. Coming to one table. Most of them hate each other. But if they want to get anything done, they're forced to work together. So if you come to the UN, you see Israel and Palestine. Do they get along? Go into YouTube. And up on YouTube. And say all the times in the UN. Where they're taking their shoes off and beating their desks. When one side speaks. Or Israel speaks. The Palestinians stand up. And they mass walk out. They hate each other. If they want to work, they have to come together. You could talk about India and Pakistan. Do they get along? No. Mortal enemies. But they're forced to come together. The same with many of these countries. Iran and Saudi Arabia. Iran and Saudi Arabia. Mortal enemies. United States and Russia. USA and Russia. The UN is not a is not a collection of friends. United Nations are also important in the Oshamari. With one agenda. They're an organization of enemies with many agendas. Do we really think that the UN, all these, con all these countries, Iran and Saudi Arabia, Israel, one of America's closest allies, are going to willingly introduce a Sunday law. Israel is nationalist. Israel, They're proud of their culture. They're a US ally. If they are going to willingly introduce a Sunday law. No. The reason it won't be them because the seventh kingdom of Bible prophecy does not look like them. It looks the same as this history. When George Bush says George Bush first the father, then the son you can have the UN as long as you remember who, who's the boss and who controls it the UN is subjected UN under the United States the UN itself UN is positive since 1945 it's acted as a restraint you could say the same for NATO for the European Union the problem that we have is we've been taught to fear it we Adventists have the same mindset, the same world view, it's apostate Protestantism. And we, we get that through some public speakers. If like me, Sorry. if like me, uh, David, Many of you used to watch Walter Weith. He's going to tell all those conservative Adventists to fear the New World Order.
Wota vei tacha uzama sabata mashinji vaya vano daku chenge tiza sabata utwa wone world order sisis. Which version of the new world order is he telling people to fear? Ndeipuko world order ya anu uzama anu utwa chika. Gorbachev. Ya Gorbachev. Or George Bush. Kanoti ya George Bush. He's saying. Iya arukuti. It's Gorbachev's. Tunufara kuchika ya Gorbachev. Except he won't tell you that it's Gorbachev's. He'll say it's a secret plan. With the, with the United States. The United States. So Walter Weiss, through many conspiracy theories, teaches a good conservative Adventist. That this is what they must be afraid of. This was never the threat. It has failed to be powerful enough to restrain the United States definition of a world order. United States and if we go end from beginning, this history from this history, you see, as George Bush said, the new world order is struggling to be born. And it looks like this. This is what Vladimir Putin started to fight when he came to power. Gorbachev, Gorbachev Yeltsin, Yeltsin, and Putin, na Putin are all trying to further this agenda. And what we find, particularly with the Iraq war, Vladimir Putin begins to recognize Vladimir Putin that the United States will never surrender to a multipolar world. This is an article from, I believe, from 2003. It's going to explain the connection between Iraq and the Soviet Union. Remember in both histories Iraq is an ally of the King of the South. Another reason to crush it. And this article from 2003 speaks of the mindset Vladimir Putin has. As Putin tried to prevent the 2003 war. He recognizes its past, his past and current alliance with Iraq. But he also is motivated by another desire to restrain the United States global domination and restrain the United States tendency towards unilateralism. Inside Russia, there's a strong appeal even as late as 2003 for a multipolar world where if it's multipolar Russia still has major influence. So Russia must oppose US unilateral action in Iraq. What Putin wants to do is limit U.S. power. 
Putin zvada kuzama kuita kudzivisa simba riri kuda kuwanda re America. Particularly the unilateral tendency. Kunyanya nyaye kuda kuita zvavanoda ivo. The tendency to act like they're the one world government. Nyaye kuda kuita sekunonzi ivo ndo government inotonga ma government ese paspano. All in Washington. Zese zvichitwa ku Washington. So from Putin's election even to the Iraq war in 2003 he has the same vision as Gorbachev that this is what the United States want and they can't permit it and from the Iraq war he begins to try more and more to restrain the US the final sentence of this article Russia has an interest in promoting a multipolar world Gorbachev's and strengthening the authority of the UN against the US so from the very beginning of our reform line you see two streams of information and it began in 1989 but it continues all the way through we can call them different things we can talk about CNN and Fox. But I would suggest we don't need Fox. The world view that Fox pushes and, and all right leaning outlets is that the world must be unipolar. CNN, their world view is that the world should be multipolar. This I would suggest is the major division between the two. Unipolar, multipolar. Unipolar, ne multipolar. CNN's view is more liberal. Because that's the concept of liberalism. Fox is conservative. They want to conserve America's predominance. But if we bring this internal, it's not just conservative. External that pushes this thinking. It's conservative Adventism. Spread by people like Walter Weith. And if you remember his videos, most of what he spreads is heavily based on conspiracy theories. Theories with no real substance. No real evidence. You come to 2016 and there's election. And you have Clinton. Clinton. And Trump. Na Trump. And Clinton. Clinton. Is a globalist. That's an attack that is made on her externally by agencies such as Fox News. 
Fox News vanuita zvenao all of a sudden you find a struggle within this movement eh ipangwa ipangwa iyo tinobata tanga kuona kunetsana pakati peboka e we recognize that trump sounds bad tino tanga kuona kuti ah trump anenga kashata but clinton is a globalist i see plutin clinton anenge anoda zvekubatana kwenyika yose she has friends in the un ane shamari dziri ku united nations she's part of this and the reason why we can't see clearly in 2016 is because our conservative world view through people like Walter Weiss have taught us that this is the threat so we could say it could easily be Clinton just as much as Trump. Because isn't the seventh kingdom the UN? United Nations. I want to read an article. This is the Guardian. It's the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper. You can find this article online quite easily. It begins, Trump urges world. This is Trump. I'll double check the date. I think it's 2018. It's 2018, last year. 2018. Sep September 26. September 26. Trump is speaking at the UN. Trump Arguturaku, United Nations. And Trump urges the world to reject globalism. Trump Anukuru Zranika Yose Kut Iram Binyae Kutipa Vava no Batana Sinika. So Donald Trump spoke to the UN. So Donald Trump and Taura ku Batore United Nations. And he urged other nations to reject globalism. Over Tikuna Zumenika and Gati Rambe Fungwaya Kumbata and Zwenika. And embrace patriotism. Tietino Bata Fungwa Yikus Miri Yati Chida Nika Zid. In his address, he highlighted the achievements of his presidency. Attacked his enemies and spoke strongly against multilateralism. In the very home of multilateralism. He's attacking the UN from within the UN. In his speech, he says that he's achieved more in his two years as president than, than almost any president in the history of the United States. United States. And the UN burst into laughter. How much respect do they currently have for him? Not very much. He spoke of his dislike of multilateral institutions. Which he portrayed as threats to U.S. sovereignty. He says America is governed by Americans. We reject globalism. And we embrace patriotism. So you can understand what side of this equation Trump stands on. They find it interesting that Russia declined to attend Trump's speech. 
kuti Russia yakaramba kuno kuno pinda kuti terere Trump achitaura. So they weren't in the speech. Vaka pinda maito speech. Trump didn't attack them in his speech. Trump ana kuda kuwa e, ku, kuwa ruisa pachitaura wachake. You find after he spoke. E, tunona Trump apeza kutaura. Others just stood up to speak. Vamuaka simko kutuwa taure. Particularly uh, Macron, the French president. Kunyanya anonze Macron president oku France. First of all, I'll quote the UN Secretary General. Chukutanga ndicha taura, ndicha taura mashuku a Secretary General weku UN. He says democratic principles are under siege. Ano taura kuti e, nyaya ze utungi we, we, we kutaru jinji za akuda kuruiso. Challenges are arising. Pane e, ziminga mpinyo ziruku simuka. Multilateralism is under fire. Exactly when we need it the most. <laughs> so if you ever needed multilateralism more to restrain a superpower, it's now. And then Emmanuel Macron spoke. Emmanuel Macron kuti. And condemned. Trump's speech. Anova ati aza taura Trump is as he as namaturo. There is not peace between these nations. Apana kubata na pagatpeni kais. There is not peace between the United States and the UN itself. Apana kubata na anotkuira na pagatpe UN nini kaya meri. The UN agency that investigates war crimes. Eh, but remwa reku UN no one aneje eh. Tried to investigate the United States. And America said no. America quit. We are untouchable. You can investigate any country. But whatever we do is not open to UN investigation. So more, more and more, particularly under Trump, you see this dynamic. Exactly what George Bush, father and son, were fighting for. U.S. control over the U.N. The U.N. looks like this. Many countries. I would suggest that that is good. The U.N. that's coming is the seventh kingdom. UN paino kuda yawa e e e umambo we we poro fita we chisebe is many countries unenika zakawanda under one zeri pasi pe nika imochete that speaks like a dragon inonza inota ura se 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 shatu and this is the seventh kingdom dio umambo we chisebe people are critical of the UN. Because it furthers many religions. Supports many religions. You know, you know, I would suggest that's good. Every religion is given freedom to operate. But what is coming is not this dynamic. There will be many religions under one Protestantism, which is already spreading today. So, in summary, the world that we have to fear that we know is coming is not a world run by the UN and female globalists 
With liberal ideas. That is what we should have hoped for if we understood end time events. But if we understand World War One and World War Two. And the beginning of our reform line. The UN, NATO, the European Union, NATO, the European Union are there to protect us. To restrain as long as they can. Before they're, de before they're subjugated <laughs> under one world superpower. <laughs> that was George Bush's dream. <laughs> and what Donald Trump is doing now. <laughs> the problem we have <laughs> when we have the world view that distrusts globalism is that like Walter Weiss our fear of this is built on conspiracy theories you can go back 40 years to see how Donald Trump lies. When he wanted to start making an impact in politics, what did he start to say? Obama is Kenyan. Is Kenyan. And a Muslim. Donald Trump starts his rise in politics by using conspiracy theories. Donald Trump And he uses his conspiracy theories to convince the people that this is what they should fear and he's the only one that can protect them from it. Obama is a globalist. Clinton is a globalist. And he says, I'm your only hope because he's going to create fear the same way Hitler did. All of these agencies are working against you. So he'll attack the UN. He'll attack the World Health Organization. He'll say vaccines are hurting you. Obama is part of a conspiracy plot. Clinton secretly killed people. He furthers all these conspiracy theories because they further his agenda. He's using the exact same conspiracy theories you would find shared in conservative Adventism. There's two streams of information. Two different world views. And it's not safe to say that the Ula and the Hidekel are equally bad. We wouldn't say that in 1996 with the Time of the End magazine. When our William Miller stood in opposition to the church. So we cannot say that in the plowing time of the Nathanims. 
If both sides are equally good and bad for the Nethanims, go to the plowing of the priests and say that. And you know we can't do that. The whole world is being divided between two different world views. You can bring into this the test we're facing. Because what promotes this agenda is all based on conspiracies. Created fear. And just like World War One and World War Two, the issues of race, gender, and equality. Because in a multipolar world, it's the only world view that stands for equality. In the biggest, from the biggest perspective we can have. Two streams of information. It's already divide, dividing people world over. You can see extremes. Many, many people confused or still deciding. But if you look at the latest gun violence in America, they have internal terrorists killing immigrants Jews, Muslims, black people because they believe that they're to fear them they're using the same language as Trump American supremacy is under threat by an immigrant invasion. They're on this side of the issue. And the split is just becoming more and more farther and farther apart. And we find the same streams dividing them the same world view begins to divide Adventism outside and inside this movement because conservative Adventists think, are thinking like conservative Protestants most of this thinking comes from apostate Protestantism it requires unlearning to really think about the implications of this. That we're required to stand on one side. People can think this is an American problem. In 2014, you see it begin in America. 2014 is Sunday law. For our fractal. So we already know what the seventh kingdom looks like. It's already rising. Just like after the Sunday law. Country after country begins to fall. Brazil. Brazil. It's gone. They have a worse president than Trump. And then you go to Brazil. And they have a populist dictator. 
Tonga, Zisinga, Kutseru, Shinji. We speak to Brazilians in this movement. Mukataura Nema, Brazilians, Varumkat Mebokarino. And they say Trump is bad, we see it. Vanoti, ah, Trump or Ashata, Tinusuona. But we need our president. Ah, see, President, we do Kunika Quedis to no mood. It's going to make Brazil great again. Achaita with Brazil, even Nika Kurumbira Zakar. They just failed their Sunday law. Varukuto Kone or Kunzisa Sunday. Australia. Australia has church and state. Kunem Batan is a way Nika, never matum the rainy. People in the movement defending that. Vanu, Varumbo Karinari, Varukuto Miranizo. Don't realize what they're failing. Avas Kunzisa, Varukone or Kunzisanya. Country after country. Nika, Nika. Why are we saying Patrick Tarakut that your current president? would make Zimbabwe great again. It's because of the wrong world view. It's not an American problem. 2014 is the Sunday law. Con country after country is already falling. What we need to consider is what they're falling to. What Sunday law actually looks like and means. Sunday law ino munyatsu ku oneka se. So when we come back tomorrow, sakapatino dzoka mangwana. We'll finish Acts 27 and do a short review. Ticha pedza sa Acts chapter 27 to vata dzokurira bicha. But in summary, asi mukupedzira tichiona pfungwa dzedu. Like the priests, eh sema priesta. The nephilims are already being worked. Uh, ma, ma nethini, They're already being divided into two groups. By two streams. Ne, ma, ruizi, ma, and we can see them it, dividing two streams ma, nzizimbiri, no by what worldview they want to carry. Ne, ma, wonero, From 1989, Vamgoda, 1989, the United States had a test. United States, they did not have to push a unipolar agenda. But like Felix and Festus, they rejected their opportunity and they chose the wrong agenda. The one world superpower. And this history of 89 to 91, 1989 to 1991, is typifying Paniam to Sunday law. If you're willing to cut our line, and despite what went wrong for them in this history, they're already showing us what the seventh kingdom looks like. And it looks like a U.S. dictatorship. It's controlling other countries. We can already see that with their military or with their economy. With tariffs. Tichi ona zikare ne ma 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 itira ano ita ekutzivisa na ku tengesera na. Donald Trump is already saying. Donald Trump aruku toti. To some South American countries. Kunetzimwe nika ziriku zasiko ya America. You're going to do what I say with immigration. Muchaita zandiriku taura ni nfamsoro pe nya ezepusha nira na. Or I will just. Your country and your economy. Ah, kanamukasa daro inini nda kuto paradza niyazo ufumo nika yeyi. That's what the seventh kingdom looks like. Ndo mamira kaita chikara chichi seventh kingdom profit. If you kneel with me, we'll close in prayer. Gati fuga miti na mati nimna mantu petse. Dear Father in heaven. Thank you for this camp meeting, the opportunity to collect together and study. I pray that we'll understand these things. We know it's a lot of information, Lord, but you, 
You give us these lines to demonstrate what the future looks like, and we thank you for that. We thank you that you love us so much that you want to teach us. Help us to have a clearer and a clearer understanding, not just of the future, but today, what's currently happening. Thank you, Lord, that you believe in equality, that you don't stand for this dictatorship, this unipolar world. I pray that as we look at these things, that we'll be able to also have a clearer understanding of your character, of who and what you are, of how you see your people. And may we more and more reflect that in our own lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.